Hey everybody. So we have here today a uh, bonded, a mobile bonded solution called Mobile Viewpoint Airlink. We have a two-channel SDI um, encoder with eight S um, SIM cards on the top, along with some internet connectivity. So you can plug and play with uh, local Wi-Fi or a drop-down hardline internet and have a bonded solution back to a decoder, which we have in our REMCR, um, which is a four output um, decoder box that lives in a one RU space. And we can take in up to four camera feeds and be able to switch that on the fly remotely. And you can also um, stream uh, directly from here to any destination. So you can bring this as a, an encoder standalone uh, without the need to decode it back at your, uh, your MCR. Um, it's, it fits in this really nice uh, backpack, I don't know if you see it on the overhead, um, and it fits this antenna to give you greater range with your um, SIM cards. Um, like I said earlier, it has up to eight, so you have um, eight connections um, over these little mini DIN connectors. Um, you just pop this off with a couple of uh, Allen keys and then connect all those together. You get extended range. Um, along with all the sort of bonded options that you have, um, it also adds a feature of giving you a mobile hotspot so you can also be surfing the web, communicating with your team, doing downloading assets, doing whatever you need to do in the field without the need to be connected to a, um, a plug on the wall, so to speak. Or if you're like we often find ourselves in on remote locations, um, the internet speed isn't necessarily the best. So this is one really valuable solution to have for any remote um, production. Um, what's super convenient about this is that you can pop this into a camera over a V-mount. You can get it also in a gold plate mount. Um, you can attach a battery to it on the back. Um, the backpack also features on the inside a little uh, V-mount plate. I don't know if you can see that in there. It's a little dark. You can just slide this in, power it with a uh, DTAP connector or pin. Uh, that's actually not DTAP, excuse me. That's just a four pin DC adapter for uh, VMAP batteries. And then you also get the option of uh, uh, audio communications with um, a mic return, uh, an IFB return and a mic send back to your home base over 1 8th. Um, it also has HDMI, so you can mix and match HDMI and SDI, which are switchable um, as your input sources. And then in addition, also has an HDMI out for monitoring. Um, yeah, it's a really amazing bonded solution. We love it. We're one of the first people in New York to own one of these things, thanks to CP Communications. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a really powerful product, and we can't wait to bring it out in the field more and more often in 2020. Yeah. Al, did you say that it's touchscreen? Did I miss that? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's really Let me weird. fire this guy up for you all. Awesome. On the bottom is the power button. You just slide the V-mount battery on there. Takes a second. Yeah, this is a, I think, they're, th so we got the supersized version of this guy, which with two SDI inputs, also has a bigger touchscreen on the front. Um, super handy, super responsive. Um, the amazing thing is that once this thing is on and online and running, you can remote into it and have the same GUI that you would find as if you were working with it um, in person. So you don't necessarily have to be uh, on location to control this thing. Um, and still have all the same functionality that you would as if you were right there. It's just that um, fantastic. So as you can see, it's really bright, really easy to use in the sun. Even in this bright lighting in the studio, you can still really re read it pretty oh, wow. well. Okay. You have all your configuration on the left-hand side, start and stop. Um, the really awesome thing is that th this is the only bonded solution that I know of, at least correct me if I'm wrong, but it can go down to one second delay. That's pretty much like a phone call. At least it's similar to what we just did with uh, with Liz with a one second delay or so um, from point to point. Um, so long as you have it all configured correctly, you're gonna have some really, really powerful and robust um, solutions for remote productions. Yeah, and while we are one of the only companies to be using this in uh, New York, or to own it, excuse me, in New York, um, this has been used globally on a lot of big productions, um, productions like bike races, where you need cars remote following all the bicycles, things like that. Uh, I do want to bring up how uncomfortable, Al, is it for the audio guy to be so far away from the audio board? 
Oh, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, I figured you were really uncomfortable right now. Um, we should set up like a, like an iPad control yeah, for like, you or something. I need like a little mixer over here. <laughs> Well, Ali, you did really good. I know that was oh. probably hard to do a live demo. I feel like that was very comprehensive. Oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up that I was excited when I saw that we were going to be talking about this product because it actually solves a problem that we talk about often, um, which is that if you are, like what this product is for is if you are doing a parade or a rally or, um, what was the other thing? A protest, marches, anything where you're out in the field and you don't really have control over the different elements. You know, you don't really know what the internet's gonna be like. And there's a, quite a few products that kind of manage this now, but to have the multiple channels, the different, there's a lot more options with this product. I don't know, I was really excited. It's something that I find a lot of clients are interested in because it allows them to do something that maybe wasn't available to them before. Yeah, Al, can you just uh, talk about the where the signals go? Like, do you have to have an enco a decoder on the other end? What what else can you do? How, what do you do with the signals once they're in the in the box? Yeah, so like I was saying before, um, obviously your SDI goes on the side over here. Really nice, uh, nicely built spigots, a really hardcore. Um, and then as soon as this, as soon as you start the encoder on this side, you can either do one of two options. Um, one is that you have it paired directly with a decoder and a REMCR, like we do currently, or you can go directly to your destination um, over the internet. I think those are two different sort of price points in terms of like what happens where and like how uh, Mobile Viewpoint deals with your transferring. But for 95% of use cases, we're gonna be using this thing from point to point. So from the field back to us and then encoding up to whatever platforms, even our own. So it really gives you a handy solution um, in terms of being able to just drop this onto a remote set and have two camera feeds coming in and then being able to switch it remotely, um, you know, halfway around the world. Yeah, yeah, two cameras in a backpack with IFP is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna solve like, I can't even tell you how many shows are just yeah. that simple. Yeah. And, you know, to have this and be in your own home and we always, we've been talking a lot in 2019 and I think a lot more in 2020, we're gonna be talking a lot more about um, at home production, so to speak, um, where we can just send this off to a crew that knows our cameras really well and we can be able to configure this, um, you know, in our, <laughs> in our office and, you know, wherever we are at the moment and be able to switch a show and um, you know, still have the same quality that you'd expect as if you brought, you know, 30 fly packs with you and set it all up, and you know, brought and had to put 15 people on a plane, and um, just to make a show happen. But you can. So the nice thing is that we can scale up. So we have since the one RU we have right now is can do up to four decodes. We can get another one of these guys, and we can have you know four cameras in the field, and have a mix of sources, and be able to, you know, have a pretty complete show. Very cool. Yeah, remote production is obviously where the industry is going as well. So it's um, this is a step in the right direction. I love the antenna. The antenna thing is yeah. what yeah. Yeah, that really sure. kicks it up a notch. Is uh, First of all, the eight SIM cards it kicks it up a notch, but the antenna being able to um, get out higher. We're doing a lot of productions where we've got, uh, we're in someone's home in a remote community for like a political event or something. And it's really hard to get cell service. Um, and a lot of those places, a lot of them don't have good cell service. A lot of homes don't have obviously very high uh, upload speeds. They have good download speeds, but not so good, not so good on the upload speed. Uh, but this has been really helpful. Having the antenna allows us to get a lot better signal in those remote areas as well. To, to Anna and Aubrey's point too, yeah. having this antenna sort of doesn't necessarily get around the whole having to bring a cow in. If you know, if you're familiar yeah. with what that term is, it's a cellular service will bring in a truck that'll help to um, upgrade the mobile, the uh, SIM card, or, sorry, the 4G speeds in the area for large events, especially when everybody's on their phone tweeting about it or posting on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. So having this sort of gives you the upper hand in that sort of those harder environments. Um, yeah. yeah, and it gets around sort of the issues, you can go on and on and on, it gets around the issues of like um, frequency coordination with wireless, um, you know, so it's just another step up in the various bonded solutions that we have available for remote productions.